Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we really do want your questions to drive this session, um, but we'll tell a little bit about ourselves so that you can think about those questions for a few minutes. Um, but just to make sure you're in the right place, uh, this is the webinar for students accepted to the School of Business at the College of New Jersey. And my name is Tammy Dietrich. I'm the Assistant Dean for the School of Business. And I have our coordinator for undergraduate advising, who is Mary Lair Furtado with us. She's waving. And we also have three of our rock star peer mentors with us. Um, if, if we could, we often joke that we won't let certain students graduate and we would love to hold these guys back, but they have really bright futures. Uh, so we're glad that they're with us tonight. So with that being said, um, before everyone introduces themselves, I do wanna draw your attention to the bottom of the Zoom window. I'm going to guess that a lot of you are spending a lot of time on Zoom right now, but if not, go to the bottom and you'll see what says the chat feature. At any time that a question occurs to you, please type it in the chat box and you can type it to all panelists so we can all see it because we want to make sure that we answer each and every question that's on your mind and please don't limit questions just to business. Um, we have well-rounded experience throughout campus and the area, and we're happy to talk about anything. So Mary, why don't you go ahead and uh, say hi. Hi. <laughs> so as Tony said, my name is Mary Lair Furtado. I'm the coordinator for undergraduate advising for the School of Business. I've been at TCNJ for about five and a half years. Um, work very closely with Tammy and welcoming our incoming students. So I advise undeclared business and then I also advise uh, change of major students. So people who might come in as say accounting and decide they want to do finance. I'll work with those students to kind of guide them through that process. I also have the pleasure of overseeing the peer mentors, three of which are here of course. Um, and then Tammy and I work closely for our Business 99 orientation seminar for the freshman students. And then Tammy oversees the transfer section of that class. In the spring semester of freshman year, I then instruct the freshmen on a professional development seminar for everybody but accounting. Um, also work very closely with faculty. We have a faculty advising system. So once you are in a declared major, you then have a faculty advisor. So I help faculty with their advising, learning procedures and answering their questions and things like that. So that's what I do. All right, let's hand it off. We'll go alphabetical by first name. So Katia, you want to say hello? Sure, hello. First, congratulations on your acceptance. We're all very proud and excited for you. Um, so my name is Katia. I am a senior economics major. I have a minor in Arabic. Um, I am from Marlboro, Monmouth County, if anyone's here. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Um, I think one of the reasons why, talk a little bit about why I chose TCNJ. Um, I think 100% this Zoom call shows that, that we all love each other, we're all like a big family. You never feel far from home when you're walking around, you always have friends, uh, familiar faces. And um, yeah, we're really excited to talk to you today. All right, here we go, Kyle. Hi everyone, I'm Kyle Rice, uh, graduating senior finance major, which is a little weird to say. Uh, I'm from Wyckoff, New Jersey in Bergen County, uh, up north. Woo. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll be working at uh, JP Morgan Investment Bank in a couple months after graduation. Um, here, like some of the things I did, uh, obviously I'm a peer mentor, also club baseball and involved in various honor societies and uh, DSP, which is a professional business fraternity. Um, yeah, and we're really excited to have you here. Uh, look forward to your questions. And Nicole. Hi, everyone. Uh, again, like everyone said, congrats on your acceptance to TCNJ. Um, to give you a little bit about me, um, well, I'm a senior graduating, also sadly, a marketing major. Um, and the reason I chose TCNJ, I actually run track at the school. So um, I was able to meet some of the students um, during my junior and senior year that were on the team. And I immediately got the sense that TCNJ was a big community and family. So that was the biggest reason I came here and it did not disappoint for sure. Um, so as for things I do on campus outside of track, um, in Greek life, I uh, joined some honor societies as well. Um, and I also, being a student athlete, and I'm a peer mentor um, with these people as well. <laughs> yeah. And oh, after graduation, not sure entirely, but right now I'm working at J&J, &J, Johnson Johnson, as a supply chain co-op. Awesome. 
All right, so now you know just a little bit about each one of us, but we all have so much to share with you. Um, we don't have any questions yet, but please type them into the chat box. And while you're thinking, we'll bop around with a couple questions that we often get asked. So um, for any of the mentors that are with us, um, did you live on campus? And can you tell us something about your freshman semester on campus, either about your roommate or what the transition was like, or what did you do on weekends? But talk a little bit about your campus life experience. Uh, I guess I can start. So um, mine was a little bit different. I wasn't in the towers. I was in uh, Centennial Hall because um, I'm in the honors program. So that's where the honors program students used to be housed. I think now they're in Norsworthy. Um, so I actually ended up getting a single, which I thought was pretty awesome and unique. So I don't have any like crazy freshman roommate stories or anything. Um, um, and I guess like Katia and Nicole can talk more to that. But in terms of, you know, the transition to college, I thought for me it was pretty seamless. Um, and being that we're in New Jersey and I live in New Jersey, it was pretty easy to go home like once every couple months if I wanted to. And just the fact that you know, you know, you're kind of close to home is reassuring. Um, that being said, I don't think I really felt myself wanting to really ever leave campus. Um, you know, you have a lot of freedom and there's a lot of experience that you um, get to have. Um, and for me, club baseball was kind of what I did on the weekend. So we really got to get off campus and go visit other schools, uh, colleges and universities. And so that was something that kind of, you know, grasped um, onto me like pretty early on. So yeah, I guess you guys can talk to a, a little bit more about that. Um, Kyle, while you're still, uh, you know, while we're still talking about your experience, yeah. you have a question and that was, can you talk more about being part of a business fraternity? Yeah, so DSP is a fraternity in which um, it's professional and social. So we're a part of the Intergreek Council, which means we do events like uh, Greek Week and Homecoming and like have mixers with other organizations. And then professionally, uh, we're mostly focused on developing for, you know, getting internships and jobs. So working on our resumes, um, learning about professionalism, what it means to, you know, dress like business professional, business casual, have networking events with alumni who are in companies such as, you know, J&J &J and Merck and other companies in the area um, doing networking. So that's pretty much the essence of being in a business fraternity and some of the, the pros of that. And you're really popular, Kyle, because somebody also asked, do club sports often interfere with classes? Uh, so the answer to that is no. And one of the great things that uh, I love about TCNJ is Wednesdays, usually there are no classes for students, or if there are, they're either a 50 minute class early in the morning or uh, a three hour class later at night. And so during the day on Wednesdays, club sports will meet to practice. And so for example, club baseball, we practice on Wednesday and Friday after classes are over around four o'clock and then all games are actually on the weekends. So usually we'll play um, a double header on either Saturday or Sunday and then another game Saturday or Sunday, depending on when the double header is. So everything is on the weekends or around class time. So, it, you know, it doesn't interfere with class. Great. Thanks. Anyone else want to talk about memories from their first semester? <laughs> yeah, um, actually, so from going off your question, Tammy, so something that I had a huge misconception of when I came to TCNJ was um, that everyone told me that it was a suitcase school, like uh, everyone goes home on the weekend. So I was really scared of that when I came. And I was like, oh man, or like, is everyone going to leave? Am I going to feel pressure to leave? Because I'm from Hunterdon County. It wasn't too far from school. Um, so, but when I got there, I was like, wait, no one goes home. Like, that's such a big mix misconception. I think like, it's actually like 85% of students live on campus. Like according, I worked for the office of student transition. So it's an orientation leader. And like, it was really like, I never felt like I was just alone. There was never nothing to do. There was always something going on in the student center or like something going on that I wanted to be a part of. So I think I went home maybe twice, like all the freshman year. Like it was nice to have the option too, but I, didn't want to, but it, you know, but it was fun. <laughs> Nicole, somebody had asked a question would actually be good for you to take. And that was, um, could you talk more about being a marketing major and what were your structure of your major and classes? Yeah. Okay. So I think like during your first year, um, 
I actually came in as an open options major, so I wasn't sure like which major I wanted to choose, but you have to take all like those intro to every single part of the business like classes. So I took introdu introduction to marketing, to management, like they took econ classes, everything like that. But once you get after, after your freshman year into sophomore, junior, senior. I think something that was cool about the marketing major uh, was because there's a lot of different options to do like different specialty classes. So you can take things like social media marketing, advertising, there's also marketing research you can do. I took marketing and public policy. So there was um, a lot of different options considering like maybe what your interests more so lie under. So I also took professional selling because I had an interest in sales. Um, so I I think like the marketing program there's a lot of different classes to kind of like sort of make it your own in a way because there's a lot of different variations um so that's something i've really liked i've been able to take a lot of different classes um with a lot of different varieties and i was very interested in the market research kind of going into more data side of it so i think that um understanding that marketing has those two sides of it it's looking at like maybe it could be something more like creative based but it also could be something more analytical based and i think tcnj offers a lot of classes showing you both Great, thank you. Katia, uh, Katia, I don't want to cut you off at all. Uh, <laughs> could you share something from your freshman semester looking back? Yeah, um, I got super lucky freshman year. I got, I had an amazing floor and I made my five best friends freshman year from the rooms right across from me, my neighbors. And uh, we're still best friends now. It was, I think that beginning welcome week, um, bonding area time frame is absolutely amazing and take advantage of every second you have there because um you really you're all in the same boat no one's feeling uncomfortable to walk up to people and be like hi my name's katia um <laughs> yeah so it's a really that fun period where you could literally walk up to anyone on campus and it not be awkward <laughs> although it's usually it's that like that always it's especially um nice to have that freshman only time uh to bond with everyone around you nice um, we're getting a lot of questions bouncing up now. Um, <laughs> being that more than one of you is an athlete, um, could you guys address this about how to, how's the best way to balance school and playing a sport? And are there any techniques or tips you might offer? Yeah, for me, I'm on the track team. So I think that it's really important coming in, like you're gonna get a practice schedule and understanding like those aren't optional, obviously. So. Um, just making a schedule right off the bat of like when you can do homework, when you're gonna like make sure to have time for your friends. Like I never would do homework on a Friday night. Like I never ever want to do homework on a Friday and usually Saturdays I like to sleep in. So I block off like, all right, this is my like, I'm chilling. I need to take time for myself because that's really important to put that in your schedule. You can't always be going like all the time because sleep is important, especially if you're an athlete. Um, so I think that understanding your schedule and like, maybe working with your advisor and maybe finding some tips. I know campus has a lot of resources to bring like a good schedule for yourself, but I m marked down my study time, my practice time, my class time. And through that, I was able to really manage it very well. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed being a student athlete. I think it's a good experience. So good for you if you guys are considering doing a sport here. Yeah, going off that, I think um, Google Calendar is also your friend. So you can kind of plan yeah. out uh, what you want to do and when you're going to do it. And that's something that is really helpful in managing your time. And also, especially freshman year, um, you know, high school, you have like a pretty rigorous like class schedule where you go from like, you know, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then you have extracurriculars and homework after that. Um, college, like you pretty much have two classes a day. And so you have a lot more free time. And that's something you'll realize pretty early on. So as long as you are diligent and manage your time and, you know, you know, set like time aside each day to do homework, uh, start preparing for tests. There's really no issue in terms of what I found with, you know, having practice or games uh, on the weekend because you do have a lot of time throughout the week for that as well. Great. Thank you. Mary, we have a question about calculus and math placement. If you could jump in, that would be awesome. Um, one of the attendees has asked, um, my roommate mentioned something about taking pre-calc instead of calc because our ACT score wasn't high enough. So how do we find out which math or other classes we'll be taking our first year? So oh, perfect. What we'll do, um, everybody will get the placement ebook sent by records and registration. I think they're still locking in all that information, but that'll get sent out. What we do then, if you're coming in as a freshman, 
we will look at ACT, SAT scores, and we abide by the math department. So I don't think there's going to be any changes for the math placement. Um, you will, will be placed either into intermediate algebra, uh, pre-calc, or we have another class that's like a pre-calc for business majors called intro to functions, and then calculus. So most of our students will take calc for business and social sciences. If you wanna do something that would require straight calculus, then you would take calc A. So we work with you on that. For our transfer students coming in, we will look to see if you took any math classes similar to algebra, pre-calc, or calculus um, in terms of your placement. You only have to go up to calculus once you're done with calc, you're, you're done with the math. Um, you also take statistics as well, but that's a little bit different. If you feel though that uh, you say you placed into pre-calc, but you think, no, I know pre-calc, I can move right on to calc. Uh, there is an option where you take the CLEP exam. If you get at least a 50 on pre-calc, then you can go on to calculus. Uh, but we try to be really careful to make sure that you land in the proper math placement. As long as you place into pre-calc, then we can also add you into micro or macro economics. If you uh, need to take intermediate algebra, then we start looking at maybe like management marketing classes, the intro level classes until you get through algebra and then the next semester you can take micro macro. I hope that made sense. <laughs> and then of course AP, if you have AP credit, the AP legend is supposed to go online hopefully by the end of this week. So you can see um, if you place out of calculus. That'll all get sent to you though. <laughs> While you're at it, why don't you say, why don't you answer this one? Um, do most students have no classes on Fridays? <laughs> it varies. I, what happens is, and this is the way that registration works at just about any four year I've ever been aware of, been to, worked at. Um, you kind of move up. As soon as you start to earn more credits, then you register earlier. Uh, so coming in, you likely, you probably would have maybe a Friday class, but then as time goes on, you might be able not to do a Friday class. But we typically, it's Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday. Um, you might have a once a week class here and there, but uh, for your first semester, can't guarantee you won't get a Friday class. But a lot of people do have Wednesdays off, which is Seems weird, but like it's kind of nice to have that break in the week. And I know a lot of people do clubs and clubs meetings like that day instead. Um, so it's a good way to just kind of like balance out your week. So you'll have business 99 though. <laughs> so. Class, best class ever. <laughs> we don't want it at 9 a.m. anymore. It was <laughs> 9 a.m. We moved it so it doesn't start until at least 10. Yeah. And once, so your first semester, your classes are scheduled for you, but then afterwards you actually make your own schedule. So depending on, you know, if you want certain days off, you can definitely do that. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, what classes you can find or you need to take, but you can kind of schedule uh, your classes for whatever, you know, best suits you. And it, it's definitely easier once you're, you know, a sophomore, junior, senior, it just gets easier to kind of customize your schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a rite of passage gets better every year in school. Exactly. Um, so a question for everybody, whoever wants to jump in, but we have a question about what professional opportunities are available for business students? So um, basically TCNJ has an awesome platform called Handshake, and that is employer specifically targeting openings for internships or jobs just for TCNJ students. <clears throat> so right on there, you submit, send your resume and everything, and there's so many opportunities no matter what your major is. So you have lots of opportunities there. Um, we also have the Career Center, which is super awesome. They help you with resume building. You could drop in, be like, this is what I have. What can I do to make it better? And they can counsel you on that. Um, we have um, a lot of um, there's a lot of internships offered through TCNJ as well. You could do research with professors, even prof because we're such a small school, professors are also a huge um, help in getting professional experience. Um, I got m most of my guidance professionally came from really close professors that I had. Um, they know you one on one, so it's not like um, you've never seen them before. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say most of my professional experience came either from Handshake, professors, or from help from the Career Center. Yeah, in addition to that, there's uh, case competitions that happen. So my uh, freshman year, I participated in the PwC case competition and sophomore year in Johnson & Johnson case competition. So those are essentially um, 
business cases that you're given that reflect like deals um, that have been done in the past and you basically do your own analysis and present to usually TCNJ alumni that now work for those companies. Um, so it's really good experience to kind of get used to what you might see in an internship and kind of get your foot in the door with some of those alumni that'll be reading your application for potential internships or leadership development programs that uh, companies in the area have. We also have the Mayo Business Composition, which is like TCNJ's version of Shark Tank. Um, you submit a business plan, you do presentations on it, and there's a first, second, and third prize. I think the first is what, 30,000? Maybe? Yes. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, I know we had one winner come to my class and he created like a robot for mental health. Um, it was honestly the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So that's something that's a really cool opportunity. All you need is an idea um, and a team and you can uh, shoot your shot. <laughs> yeah. and what's, what's great is that each year uh, a freshman team comes in the top three. I'm pretty sure at least every year I've been at TCNJ. So um, it doesn't have to be like once you have business experience or college course experience, you can kind of get involved right away in that, which is really awesome too. Yeah, to build off what they said, there's other um, professional opportunities that you can get involved with. Uh, the, act the school of business actually sends you an email every Sunday and it says like what employers are on campus, like what are the events happening? So they always keep you informed if you're like, oh, this company's on campus, like this is great, I'm gonna go see them. Um, it's on campus, very easy. Or they'll provide you with like some notice of being like, oh, there's this networking event in the area. So I remember my sophomore year, I actually got to go to a networking event in. Uh, Newark at the Prudential Center, which is the home of the New Jersey Devils, if anybody's familiar. So, um, like, it was a big sports, um, like, networking session, and I'm a big sports person, so I went, and the school business actually paid for me to go. So, it was awesome, and I'm, that doesn't happen every time. They're not going to pay for everything, necessarily, but that happened then, and it was awesome, and I love that experience. Um, and it led me to, like, my first internship. So, um, definitely take advantage of those emails. And then also you can get involved into sales competitions. So a lot of them are rooted through this one organization. It's called Pi Sigma Epsilon. So it's a sales and marketing fraternity. It's co-ed. So our business fraternities are co-ed. Um, even though it's called a fraternity, it's co-ed. So um, I know in one of those, even though I'm not in Pi Sigma Epsilon, I got to go compete in a sales competition in Florida. So I was able to go and compete on a case competition um, with three other students, which was really cool. So there's a lot of different opportunities to get involved with like local competitions or traveling to a lot of different areas. So. I see. Oh, you're on mute, I think. Yeah. Go ahead, jump in, Katya, you see questions? I, think I see a question here. Um, did you find yourself making friendships with mostly business students or was it easy to make friends with all majors? Um, Absolutely, you can so easy to make friends with everybody. So we have we have a liberal learning requirement in TCNJ, which means that you're taking classes, but not just business students. Um, all majors have to take certain classes like um, women and gender studies, um, writing. Um, there's more. Uh, there's a history class. So you're gonna you're gonna be mixed and matched with other students, and you meet them there. You meet them through your dorms. You meet them even getting food at ICOF or dining hall or at the stud just hanging out and then through clubs and stuff of course business school is always going to be tight together because <laughs> we have um our classes together and the business school is and we have a lounge downstairs where people hang out so we always have a nice family foundation in the business school but it's super easy to make friends outside thank you there's another question about school spirit um <laughs> so it, not a business question but i was wondering how various sports games are attended. Is there a lot of school spirit at them? Uh, for example, in high school, the football game stands were packed, there's a marching band, et cetera. So can somebody talk a little bit about our school spirit? Yeah, I can definitely go off that. So I'm not gonna lie to you, like it's not like going to a huge school, like giant big state school, like you know what I mean? Like getting that huge football experience, like it's just the, our school is smaller, but we do, it's still a big enough school. So I know we have homecoming and homecoming is a big deal at TCNJ. Like uh, that is fun. Like we have a huge tailgate. They literally close down all the lots. They have food, like everything. It's really, really fun. So I really look forward to that every year. It's actually a big thing that the alumni come back to. So I will definitely come back <laughs> to do that. Um, so I think um, TCNJ sports are actually very strong. So just like looking at the women's side and being like a student athlete, like our track team, we were 
uh, under 10 in the nation, as well as the women's soccer team was top five, women's lacrosse team, top five, women's field hockey, top five. So like there are a lot of really strong programs as well as the men's basketball team did very well this year. So there's a lot of really cool sports going on because they're very successful. And I like going to the basketball games a lot, um, but um, we do have really strong teams at the school. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Nicole said, I mean, our basketball team made uh, nationals this year, um, which was really awesome. And like, it's kind of when I was a freshman, I didn't really realize, but yeah, the, the sports are really strong. Like we have some really great teams and it's really fun to go watch games. Like I know I've gone and seen at least like three or four um, girls soccer games just this past year, like my senior year. So um, definitely people go to things and there's a lot of school spirit, um, but it's not like the, the same scale, like where there's 100,000 people in the stadium, but there's a lot of spirit. Um, it's just like a tighter, closer knit group. Thanks. All right, so we also have a question about laptops. And I know this is always popular at Accepted Students Day. Everyone wants advice. Um, but uh, one of our participants said, I have an iPad Pro as my laptop. Should I get a laptop to run certain programs? So this is specifically for marketing majors. So Nicole, you might be able to speak more, but in general, um, I think you should be fine because most of the time you're just using, um, you could use Google Docs or Microsoft Word on, a, on an iPad. Um, if you need to use any specific software, um, we have computers at TCNJ, you could use them on. Also, we have a VMware system where you can log in with your TCNJ username and password and access any of the um, applications or software that we have at school. And I believe you can run that on an iPad. Um, so I, you would, as long as you're comfortable typing and you feel comfortable with it, I think you should be fine. Yeah, um, as a finance major, I think if you don't have um, like a laptop yet that you're going to college with or you're thinking about getting one, I would recommend getting a Windows, definitely for finance or accounting, just because it's a lot more or it's a lot easier to use Excel and other um, finance platforms that are used. Um, just in my experience, they're a lot more user friendly. And when you go to submit your work, it's easier for your professor to download it because sometimes with Mac, there can be issues where the format changes depending on what computer you're looking at it on. So um, I would recommend Windows, but that's just my preference being in finance. Yeah, for me, for marketing, I also have a Windows computer, but I know plenty of people who have Macs and other devices. It's really what you're comfortable in. So um, you do have to, I've written so many papers, so as long as you're comf comfortable typing, I think that's like really the best thing for you. Um, and as Katya was saying, you can use computers on campus. I remember um, my computer, like my laptop actually like broke sophomore year. So I found myself using the school computers all the time. <laughs> so, and they have everything you need in them. So if there's something you're missing, uh, you can get it from there. Yeah, there's actually desktops in the business building basement too. Um, there's like a whole computer lab and there's a huge computer lab in the library too. So if you do have a Mac and you, you know, you're, you love Mac and then for smaller Excel assignments or Excel projects, you could definitely use the school um, desktops as well. So I don't think there's really an issue there. Okay, great. All right, now we're back to freshman dorms. So a question is being asked, can you prioritize the order in which uh, the dorms are considered most desirable to least? Um, now your freshman year, you have the least amount of choice possible, but it does get better. But if somebody could chime in on that. So we have two wonderful, beautiful towers that most freshmen live in. Um, it's two, you have roommates, so it's two to a room, uh, shared bathrooms, kind of a huge for freshman year. I don't think, I think it's pretty, consistent among all colleges. You know, freshman year builds character. You know, is it a Marriott resort? No. <laughs> but you bond. Um, <laughs> you, but really this is, I mean, you have nothing to compare it to. So I think that it's a great experience um, that you're dealing with all your friends and it's funny to make fun of and you laugh at it. Um, definitely build memories. Your freshman year <laughs> dorming experience. Yeah, for me, I, I lived in one of the big towers, so, but if you're not in the towers, I know, like, a lot of people say, like, oh, I want to be in the towers. It's actually 65% of freshmen that are in the towers, so that's, like, really, like, it's about half, a little more than half. Um, there is other buildings. If you're in another building, don't be discouraged by that. Like, some of my best friends live in some other different buildings. You can still see each other. You can still hang out with each other. 
you might not get like a pick, but um, yeah, I liked my experience in my dorm. It's it's a dorm, you know, It's it, but I loved living on the floor with everyone else. I think there was like 40, 45, 50 people on my floor. Um, so I was able to meet a lot of people right off the bat, just left my door open and people would just knock and be like, hey, like, want to get Chinese food tonight? And like, that's kind of how like, like we made friends to be honest. Yeah, I don't there think there's so many alum that even after like 10 or 15 years out of school, they'll still be like, oh, you were Travers fifth floor. So was I like it becomes <laughs> an identity. Yeah, well, I don't I don't think you can like prioritize um, which you'd rather have. I think um, it's just like a placement process. But then um, once you're like an upperclassman, there's also campus town that you can live in as well as um, House and Phelps, which are um, like junior and senior housing and those are uh really nice like campus town is awesome i lived there last year and this year it's like apartment style um so last year i lived in a quad with three other people and you have your own kitchen uh living room uh bathroom and it's it's really awesome so it definitely gets better but i think you know it's pretty common like me visiting colleges i still remember like most of the freshman dorms are pretty much the same so i don't really think it's that big of a, a difference so this is kind of a yeah, it's, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. If you want to talk, I was gonna move on to a related question. If you want to, so was I. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> kind of related. Is this house traveling back and forth to school? I'll be living off campus and will commute to school daily. Um, so the way teacher, teaching is situated, um, you take mostly highways to get to school. You're not gonna be taking any back roads until you're. Um, like in the Ewing area. Um, so I have a lot of friends that commute and they, they were fine with it. I'm not sure where you're coming from, but um, it's in a pretty central location. So um, you won't be driving too much distance. And we have lots of parking, so you'll be fine. <laughs> there's also like building off that, there's actually a commuters club on campus. So they try to, they're really like their best to make sure you're connected with things on campus. They meet in the student center. They make sure you're aware of the things going on. So you're not missing out on like experiences. So if you want to get involved, like you more than you really can, like they really make it as possible for you. Um, and also I saw there was another question asking if the floors were co-ed. So um, just going back to the living on campus, that freshmen like two towers travers and wolf they are co-ed floors um except for the exception of one floor i don't know why it's just one floor is all all girls it's always been like that but all the other floors are co-ed um and as for the other residence halls some of them are co-ed by wing or i mean gender by wing so um they might be like on the same floor but there's different wings like one is just for the girls and one's just for the guys um and things like that so it really depends on your your building but yeah kyle you lived in scent so you can say what that was like too. Yeah, so like you said with the wings, so my setup was, um, it's kind of like the building's a U shape. And so one side is um, guys and the other side is girls. Um, and it's like right by the, the lakes on campus. So really cool view there. Um, the girls do get the lake view, which, you know, I was a little upset about, but um, yeah, it, it definitely varies. And I think, I know for sure the towers are, um, co-ed on the same floor. I think the, the reason there's a girls floor is because I think there's more girls that go to TCNJ. So I think that's just why there ends up being one floor like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it just, it, it does vary depending on building, but for the most part, it's co-ed and interactive. Like even in scent, it's like you still talk to people on the other side of the floor because you share um, a bunch of like common rooms and there's like a game room in there too which is really cool. So you definitely still hang out with everyone. Mary, there's two different questions that um, are related to classes and advising. Um, if one is from Lauren, who says, if you're not totally sure if you want to stay in your major, who do you speak to if you want to take more general classes your first semester? And a related um, question was also asked about, say you start as business, but you decide you want to move to the School of Ed. How easy is that? So we always want to make sure you're getting the proper advising. If you're not totally sure what you want to do for a major, um, your first semester, if you're coming in as a freshman, we look at the math placement and then economics, but then you're also going to take your FSP and then you're going to take one of those liberal learning or general education classes. So you do some things outside of business. Say you came in business and you really thought you wanted to do psychology, then you can get in touch with us and we might be able to look at the first psych class, the intro to psychology for your liberal learning. Um, so we try to work with you with that, but then we'd always refer you if you really had a strong interest to that school 
to make sure you're being advised properly. We want to make sure that you take any prerequisite courses, so a course that you need to take before the next course, and that you're on track for that. In terms of changing majors once you get to TCNJ, some departments have stronger caps than others, like nursing is a little bit, it's tougher, it's, it has a much lower cap. Um, computer science, because of the use of labs, is much more challenging, engineering, but then there's a lot more flexibility between other majors. We have an internal change of major application process where you have to take at least one course, typically speaking, before you can um, get into that major. You have to at least be in it, be in progress, and then apply. And that's more to make sure that it's a good fit for you and that it's not something completely out there. Um, sometimes we might have students come in and think they, I'll use engineering for an example because they're not here, right? <laughs> People <laughs> might be in engineering, think they absolutely want to do engineering, and then they get into those classes and nope. And then we get a lot of those students who come over to business. So it varies um, in terms of capacities on different programs, but for the most part, as long as you're doing well in the classes, you'll be able to apply into the other. Do you want to add anything to that, Tammy? No, that, that was good. Yeah. I also um, have one more question to advising related. Is, is that okay if I take it? Um, for transfer students. So for transfer students and having the schedules made, we work with you on that. What we do is I would reach out to all the incoming transfer students and start working with you to build those schedules. So we look at your evaluation report that records and registration does. And then I'll also look at your classes that might be in progress if they haven't transferred in. And then I'll put precedence on your prerequisite classes. So if you haven't taken calculus or statistics, uh, micro and macro, we'll look at those. But then I keep communicating with you back and forth to try to build that schedule. So if I were to add you to a section of financial accounting and you tell me, well, I'm commuting, is there any way we can change the time? Then I'll do my absolute best to fix your schedule. Then once orientation comes around, you have access to make changes. So then you can go ahead and modify your schedule. But we will work with you um, in terms of making adjustments. Um, we got a question about COVID-19 and what might happen this fall. Um, I hate to say this, but one of the uh, most popular answers we're all getting right now is we don't know. And that's our best answer right now. What I will tell you is that our president has been addressing the campus on a weekly basis and keeping us all up to date. And we really appreciate that. She's very personal in her addresses to everyone. Um, we're considering multiple scenarios for fall so that we can be prepared with whatever needs to happen. Um, our biggest wish, of course, is that we see you all on campus in the fall. Um, if things evolve and that's not going to be possible, then you'll get communication from us as things change. But for right now, our fingers are, and toes are all crossed, um, but that's not to say that we're not preparing for all the what ifs. Um, so thank you for the question. I know it's on everyone's mind, um, but we really can't wait to see you in person. Um, I don't know if anyone has had a campus job, but we had a question about what is a campus job opportunity like? Yeah, I worked at um, the tutoring center. So I was a tutor for three years. Basically, you could tutor any class that you've got in the B, I think it's a B or higher in, or maybe it's a B plus. Um, you have weekly meetings with 2Ds and they match you with the same professor too. So um, you help them prepare for exams, you help them study, um, establish good habits, stuff like that. It's a really nice job. It refreshes your memory too. Once you get to higher level classes, I'm like, oh, thank God I tutored like this intro level class because it keeps everything fresh in your brain. So that's a great job to have. Um, I, if you're interested in languages, I was also an oral proficiency hour leader for Arabic. So basically it's kind of like TCNJ's equivalent of a teacher, a TA, I would say. Um, basically you run a 50 minute class once a week where you teach um, the language to students. This could be activities or review, whatever you'd like to do. Um, I was also a research assistant. So uh, research assistant basically, in my case, it was um, data and analytics. So just running, um, my professor was doing research on federal direct investment and immigration. So uh, she gave me her data and I ran whatever she want, tests or um, analysis she would like on it. And all these jobs are paid. Um, so they, you could set it up direct deposit, whatever you like, uh, pay levels differ, um, between levels. Um, and the more you work, the higher your pay is. So the first, so every year of tutoring, for example, your pay increases. So those are those three jobs I had. 
Yeah, um, I was also a research assistant um, for the finance chair, um, doing like an Excel competency test that we were building into her curriculum. And now I think there's a more broad business um, like Excel competency initiative. Um, so that was one thing I did and it, it is paid, um, which is pretty awesome. I mean, you're getting like good experience. You're working directly uh, with a professor who's also the chair who has a lot of knowledge. So it's beneficial to you. Um, and you're getting paid. Uh, furthermore, there's other opportunities like working at the bookstore, for example. Um, so yeah, there, there are uh, different variations of paid jobs depending on whether or not you want it to be like business related it, or, you know, it, it's really up to you, but there, there's a ton of opportunities. Yeah, I've also been employed on campus. I was a tutor also with Katia. Um, so she explained that a little bit. Um, I also being an orientation leader, that's actually a paid position on campus as well. Um, you just get a stipend for like, whatever the week you're working and everything. And then something really interesting that I actually was part of was the college engagement internship program. So basically there's a couple offices on campus. I think there's like at least 20 um, that have an internship program. So um, what that consisted of was working 10, 15, 20 hours a week, depending on which office you're working in. So I worked for the Office of Leadership and I ran all their social media accounts. I did their event planning, um, worked on a lot of the different programs across campus. So, and that was like the best thing I, for internship experience, like it was literally right on campus, very convenient, hours were like, step by me so I was able to say okay this is when I, this is when I have class and then I'm going to work x y and z hours throughout the week um, so I really like that experience and it's open like for a lot of different offices if you have a different interest depending on what office you might want to target and things like that. Yeah and as Nicole said um, the best thing about having an on-campus job is that they understand that school is your priority so they would never push you to do more hours than you can handle and they're always checking in to make sure that this is okay with you. And so you could be do as many or as little hours as you want. And say you have a really tough semester, they'll be more than happy to cut back your hours. So it's um, a little bit different than having a off campus kind of job. And that's definitely an added benefit. Um, there's a question I just wanted to address quickly. It's, are there business sororities? Um, so like I said before, um, their business fraternities are all uh, co-ed. So both guys and girls, so yeah. They're, they're not really fraternities or sororities in a sense. Uh, there's a question that says, maybe that's more for Mary, how difficult um, is it to change uh, into another school within TCNJ? And also do transfers get their schedule made for them first year? So we got those just a little while ago, those two questions. Um, but I'm also saying, I think I saw it twice about a world language um so i'm gonna quickly jump on that one because we are recording this so if you miss any part of this it will be available i believe um yes okay great so for the world language we only um have one major within the school of business that's required to hit proficiency in a language and that's the uh, bachelor of arts the ba in economics all of the other business majors their bachelor of science degree programs they do not require a second language but you can do a second language if you want to you have space to do free elective same thing with like a minor um, you could choose to go that route and use those courses to do a second language that's great we encourage that if that's something that you're interested in i'm gonna do one more real quick about computer science somebody asked if it's possible to do a computer science minor. Yes, it is. So I'll reach out over the summer because of that calculus and your math placement and all that. And I'll say if you have any interest in doing something that would require calculus, computer science being one of them, then we want to make sure you, you go the route to get into Calc A and take that class. But no, that is a doable minor. We have a lot of students who will go that route and do a minor in computer science for sure. And there's a related question. Is it possible to study a major from the business school and also study a minor from another school? Yeah, it's absolutely possible. Um, I think most students pick up a minor along their way. Um, it just, depending on how much overlap there is, you might have to plan it um, as soon as possible, see what classes overlap and uh, how you could plan out your schedule to finish in time. But yeah, so I have an Arabic minor, um, so it's not a school of business, but it all worked out timing wise. There's a related question about when you have to declare a minor. Um, 
technically you have to have it on your record at least a semester before graduation records and registration our registrar's office wants it declared then however if you really start leaning towards a minor i would recommend that you reach out to that department and declare the minor sooner there could be some classes that are restricted to majors minors in that area so you want to make sure you have access to the classes uh, to be able to take them and some minors are just more sequential than others so if you want to do i'm just thinking of psychology you have to take the intro class like 101 you take 121 and so forth um, if you're interested in uh, financial risk actuarial studies that one is extremely sequential so it depends it has to be on your record or off your record if you decide you don't want to do it anymore at least a semester before graduation but once you start leaning towards a minor you want to start um, declaring and getting it on your account um, i see a question about our faculty getting continuous training on how to teach online in the event we need to go online and the answer is yes absolutely um, our faculty did an amazing job switching from a very traditional college experience to an online environment, um, knowing that we'd have more time, additional training has been put out there and also will be mandated should we need to continuously go online. So they're getting ongoing support, but there is a full training um, plan and process um, because our faculty are not satisfied um, with the bare minimum. When they do something, they do want to do it well. They want you to learn. Um, I'm seeing, is it too late to apply for honors and Bonner if you miss the date? I'm not sure on the deadline on those, uh, Mary, or does anyone else know? No, I, I think that if you contact admissions and express interest, they can direct you to the answer there. Um, you know, certainly you can join honors and Bonner even after you join TCNJ in the fall. Um, but if you want to get a jump on it and express interest now, by all, by all means, contact admissions. Um, I think honors is something that you have to be invited to apply for, um, at least when I was uh, applying my freshman year and I got accepted, I was then invited to apply to the honors program. Um, Bonner, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I do think if you're interested in being in the honors program, you can definitely reach out to admissions and ask them um, exactly how that works. She said again that she was invited and um, to both Bonner and um, the honors. Do you know if there's like a late thing, Kyle? If you um, can still. Not, not that I'm aware of. I mean, <laughs> not to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was just a while ago. I'm not sure what exactly the policy is on like the deadline, if it's like a hard deadline. And I, I, I'm pretty sure it is like a hard deadline if I do remember. Um, but I don't want to be wrong in saying that. So definitely reach out to them and, you know, express your interest. But um, if I do remember, I think there, there was a deadline that you had to apply by. Given what's going on right now, a lot of people are extending deadlines because they know everyone's juggling so much. So you might have more uh, latitude than you would normally. Just go on the TCNJ website and go to either the honor site or the Bonner site and reach out. I'm sure somebody will get back to you. This is a fun question. Um, how are the dorm rooms and the cafeteria? Um, so we spoke a little bit about dorms. Um, as you go on, they get like a little bit more independent. So you can have like a townhouse set up where you have your own room and you live in a house with your friends. Uh, you could stick to the two um, person room and then a shared bathroom and another two person room. So they vary um, by year, you have more options as most things are in college. Cafeteria, so we have two main dining areas. So we have Eichhoff Hall, or most people call it Ike. Um, it's like buffet, buffet, buffet style. So you swipe in and you could be, you can have, we have like um, chicken station, salad, we have a main course, pasta, dessert. So that's normal buffet kind of style. And then TCNJ has this thing called meal equivalency. So I believe it's between 11 and two, if I remember correctly. So that is super cool because you can eat at the stud. So the stud is a student center and it's more of a food court setup. So there is a burger place, a Asian food place, um, sub shop, and you have the the amount of meal clip kind of changes per year, so I'm not sure what it is now because it goes $8 up. $8.66. Nicole knows exactly <laughs> how much it is. So you have that amount towards any purchase between those hours. 
that's super cool because you mix it up. Everyone hangs out during that time and it's nice. Uh, it's like a social, social eating scene. <laughs> And then I saw next question is, does the Barra Student Center seem to be uh, seem to be a place that gets overcrowded or easy place to chill? So during Meal Equip, it is so crowded, but it's like a fun crowded. There's clubs selling things. Um, everyone's moving around tables and meeting people and talk, talking with their friends. So during that time, I wouldn't say it's like the ideal study place, but the rest of the day is fine. And there's a second floor of the stud or the student center with um, like, conference tables and chairs and marker boards. So upstairs is a little more quiet if you still wanted to um, study there during that time. Yeah, building off what Katya said, the Student Center is a pretty cool place. It's where Student Affairs is. So there's a lot of different offices if you want to get involved. Um, there's the Office of Student Involvement, Office of Student Transitions, like all Greek life is up there. Like pretty much all your like hub of different types of campus involvement, they're all in the Student Center. Um, and also we have a game room in there, which is pretty fun. They keep adding new things to it, which has been fun. Um, but yeah, as Katya said, between 11 to 2, it is like so many people, and it, but it's really fun. It's where I go to really, if I want to see people, like be social, I think it's a really good place to like be able to see a friendly face. Um, but I do go there and study, like later in the day, I like going there a lot too. I saw a question about if we're offering four plus one programs and the answer right now is no, we're not. Um, but the answer a couple of years from now could very much be yes. Um, it's a big discussion going on. Um, a couple of years ago, I would have said that we would never have an MBA program, but we launched one last year. Um, really proud to do so. It's doing wonderfully. Um, that does require that you graduate and get two years of work experience and then come back. Um, but now we're looking at adding on more programs and four plus one has been talked about. So we don't have it right now, but that doesn't mean in the next few years, it won't be a new option for you. Also, I saw something about if we uh, pay our fall bill for housing and something happens that we go online, do you get a refund? Absolutely. And if you didn't know this, I was really proud of to be part of TCNJ to know that when people had to move home, um, everyone got 50% of their housing for the semester refunded. Um, I think we were one of the schools that debated it the least. It just was the right thing to do. There's a question about Greek life on campus. I'm not sure uh, which one of you might be able to take that. So both Nicole and I are in Greek life. We're actually in the same sorority. Um, so we have obviously had an amazing experience um, in it. So um, basically we have, oh gosh, I don't know, seven sororities and fraternities, maybe like four. Oh. oh. I don't know. <laughs> Around there. Um, basically, we're all very close. So it's not, um, it's, we call it pan Hellenic, but that's basically me um, describing how all the Greek lives are under the same umbrella. So all the organizations um, hang out together and have um, philanthropic events. Then we all show up to each other's events and hang out. It's a very community um, oriented. Greek life experience. Um, there's no like competition or any of that stuff. Like we all love each other and um, it's a really great way to make friends, um, to expand yourself um, for your career. You can, alumni are great resources um, in your chapter, in your sorority or fraternity. Um, it's a great way to make TCNJ feel much more homey. Um, you always have that sort of Greek life family to come back to if, if that's something that you seem interested in. Yeah, and going off that, for Greek life, there's like social Greek life, which is what Katia and I are in, so there's also like the academic that Kaya was talking about, and there's also multicultural organizations as well, so there's a lot of different ways to get involved in Greek life. I think about 25% of TCNJ students are in social Greek life, so pretty small number, like I've, like, I've met a lot of really great friends through um, Greek life. What Katia was kind of saying before, um, I think it's like, TCNJ is a really cool experience with Greek life. Uh, I was the kind of person that didn't think I was ever going to be in it, but um, when I came to TCNJ, I was like, okay, I'm going to be a part of this, so, um, but it's really like our organizations, we're friends with other sororities, and we literally do events with them all the time. I know, like, there's a Fruit Bowls off, like, right off campus is in that campus town strip, and I remember, like, Katya, my sorority, went with another sorority, and pretty much took up the entire place. Um, there had to be, like, 60 of us there, so, uh, it's really like a community, like I think everybody goes out and supports each other's events and things like that. Um, and you can't 
rush a sorority or fraternity until your second semester freshman year because TCNJ really wants you to get acclimated, like kind of get used to your campus experience, your first semester, and then your second semester at UCAM. Yeah. Plus, it's also really sorry, <laughs> great no, way sure. to gain leadership experience. So Nicole was vice president of philanthropic services in our sorority, and I was vice president of finance. And that's something that I spoke about, about in so many interviews. So if you're looking to add to your resume, it's also a great way to do it. Yeah, I see uh, questions about fun things to do and um, club fair. So there is a club fair um, for the fall. Um, so when you're a freshman, you're fall there's a fair in the student center i believe it's actually in uh, where they explain all the different clubs and organizations that are offered uh, on campus actually now that i think about it, i think it's called an involvement fair so it's basically everything from greek life to clubs to like organizations in the business school um and there's a lot of you know fun things to do um i i would say most of that is done through um clubs and meeting your friends and being involved in organizations um i think like one of the the things that I can stress the most that makes your experience um, the best and the most impactful is just being involved pretty early on and getting exposure to all the different um, areas and opportunities that TCNJ offers because there's there's just so many opportunities to be taken advantage of um, and I've had like so much fun and have really enjoyed my experience so um, I think you know it is known for its academics but like there's also a lot of fun to be had for sure. Yeah, there's actually over 250 clubs at TCNJ, so there's so many to choose from. And if you still don't like those options, you literally can make your own club and it's pretty easy. I know several students that have made their own club about things they're passionate about. Yeah, and just like unorganized things too. Um, in like the, the rec center, there's like basketball courts and tennis courts. And a lot of times like my friends and I will just go to you know, play basketball in the rec center on a weeknight or go and play tennis or volley. There's a volleyball court, like just doing fun things like that too, that are kind of more spur of the moment and not necessarily, you know, being involved in a, a structured organization. And continuing on the uh, TCNJ fun train, um, we have a question about the student, if, if there's some sort of transportation TCNJ provides to other areas off campus. So yes, we have a loop bus. Um, it leaves from Trenton Hall, so from the main um, center of campus right in the front, and it goes to the movie theater, the AMC in Hamilton, uh, it goes to Quaker Bridge Mall, and then I'm not sure if it goes anywhere else, and it maybe yeah. it goes to downtown Princeton too, if you want to go down there. I've done that before, especially yeah. when you don't have a car on campus, it's really helpful. Yeah, freshman year, we use that all the time. Even just like go to the movies on Tuesday nights, $5 tickets. <laughs> the, the bus is the, free. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. The bus is free. So it's great. <laughs> and also for like um, shopping and food. So Route 1 is like uh, really close to campus and there's a ton of restaurants on there like um, Chipotle. There, well, there was a Hands, but Hands went bankrupt. Um, I love Hands, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I do too. Of from there. And then Quaker, <laughs> yeah, I am. In Quaker Bridge Mall, um, there's a Cheesecake Factory. Um, there's also an Italian restaurant, Brio. Um, so there's a lot of like restaurants that are close. And then there's Ewing Diner close to campus and other like smaller strip malls. And um, uh, there's also like a Five Guys. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff around Wawa too. So definitely a lot of places to get food and shop. Yeah, especially in that campus town strip, um, which is basically on campus. It's really like it's off campus, but it's really on campus. Um, and then we have a Panera there. There's a sushi place there, which is really good. Uh, there's Indie Grill, which is a new place. Uh, it's Indian food and it's amazing. <laughs> Gotta be, I think that one's my favorite. And um, what other things are there? There's a lot more. Oh, Red Berry, which is frozen yogurt. Insomnia cookies. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I always forget that that's like off campus because I live right there. So I just go to that part of my home. So I don't even like think of those things. Um, I see. Uh, do business students intern at the state capitol or is it more for poli sci students? So um, I didn't intern at the capitol, but they interned with um, a former governor and I had to go to um, the state house on like probably a weekly basis. Um, so it was, it's so convenient to have it right next to Station J. It's only like 15 minutes away. So we're really lucky to have that um, right 
sort of down the street from us. So um, if you're interested in internships in that area, it's uh, really nice to be so local. Gyms, um, we have a gym in Campus Town that's open to all students. Um, it's very nice, very new. <laughs> and then for athletes, if you guys want to talk about that one. Yeah, for varsity athletes, we have our own gym, which is called Packer. Uh, it's in Packer Hall. So we have our own weight room. We have treadmills and things like that, that we work out on. Um, but in addition to like, just like everybody that you can access, especially for your first year, there's some like classes and fitness classes that you can take a part of. Um, I know that in the towers, like the two big freshman dorms there's actually like a workout room in there so they have classes in there I know they've had like spin classes and like Zumba and like other things and that's literally in the dorm so if you live there that's like especially convenient yeah there was a question from Zach about um, providing like proof of employment if you're allowed to have a car um, I think for certain circumstances you are allowed to have uh, a car as a freshman I know one of my close friends had a medical condition and so she was allowed to have her car on campus um, so I think there's, I'm not sure who you reach out to there for that, but I think um, if there is a need, then you can have the option to do that. I see a question about study abroad. Um, so I haven't, I don't know if you guys have studied abroad. No. <laughs> um, so I think Heidelberg is a popular destination for um, business students, but really you could study um, any of our locations. So TCNJ has, um, a program where we have a study center in another country. So you pay the same TCNJ tuition, um, but you're studying there. So it's really great. You don't have to worry about um, it being more expensive than it is now. And everyone that comes back won't stop talking about it. <laughs> so if you want to do it, make it happen because no one regrets it. <laughs> yeah, you can study almost anywhere. I'm pretty sure that the the business school will kind of like sponsor you wherever you want to go. Um, and then like you were talking about Heidelberg is more uh, of like a TCNJ partnership in that um, sometimes like we'll send a professor over to Heidelberg for the semester and they will they'll teach like business classes there. Um, so yeah, definitely opportunity to study abroad. I just never wanted to leave TCNJ. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you can go abroad um, for either like a May semester, which could be like a couple of weeks, or you can go for an entire semester. So if you're like, I really want to go, but I can't be gone like for a whole semester, look at the winter and summer options. I definitely think those are good alternatives. Yeah, thank you for putting that plug in there. I know not everyone wants to leave New Jersey because we have it all. <laughs> um, there was a question under the questions box about telling you more about the accounting major. Um, you know, what we can say with accounting is um, we make sure that you have the ability to earn 150 credits in the four years because that's more than what you need to actually graduate with a bachelor's degree, but you need the 150 credits to sit for the CPA exam and we certainly want you to be ready and able to do that. So the faculty have mapped out exactly how to do that in the four years. Um, also, the accounting department has special seminars for their freshmen and their sophomores um, where they are always bringing in firms that are telling you about their corner of the accounting industry because it's so vast. A lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to get a CPA, I'm going to be an accountant, you know, do people's taxes, or I'm going to work for a big firm. I mean, that's just the, the tip of the iceberg in so many ways. Um, they're small, medium, and large firms. Um, all the big four recruit at TCNJ. They always show up on our top employers lists. Um, we have a really active alumni group in accounting. Um, oftentimes when we have alumni events, there's so many accountants that come back. Um, so it's a really uh, tight network, really rich with opportunity. If you have a specific question with accounting, by all means, feel free to ask us or email the chair. Um, but in general, I, Oh, and I'm seeing a question pop, uh, pop up. Um, let's see, can you move into accounting second semester and still achieve that? Yes, absolutely. Um, like uh, Mary had said before, um, once you're at TCNJ, you're gonna need to satisfy an entry level course in any major in order to show that you can do well in that major and also confirm your interest. I mean, for all you know, you'll take an intro class and be like, wait, wait, that's not exactly what I wanted. Um, but yes, you can do that. Um, accounting is one of our more competitive programs. So you definitely want to keep your GPA um, as high as you can. Um, and you would follow the change of major process, which is a window during the first month of every semester. 
Accounting is a little bit more sequential than some of the other majors. So you'd want to apply by fall of sophomore year. So you have like that whole first year and then fall of sophomore year is when you would need to apply to stay on that four year sequence for accounting. And another accounting question just popped up about if we know we want to incorporate the minor in information systems, should we contact someone now? Um, no, there's no need to contact anyone now. Um, once you come on campus in the fall, you can declare a minor and the forms available online just download it fill it out and send it off to the chair of that department which happens to be the same chair um, dr chang is the chair for accounting and information systems so that'll be super easy and it's a popular minor to add trying to see if we missed any questions over in the question box um, we have a question about any advice for veteran students who will be in the reserves and attending tcnj um, we have a couple of veterans right now that I'm aware of, and there could be even more that I'm not aware of. These are just ones I've had conversations with. Um, they find the student services and support across campus to be really helpful. Um, we do have a Center for Student Success, and if there's any adjustments that, that you're making or special support that you need, they're happy to sit down with you. Um, you know, uh, if there's anything specific that you're looking for, I'm not sure exactly which direction to take this question, um, but I can tell you that, you know, veteran students that we have with us have been very happy and successful. Um, and overall, I think we're just so supportive of, of everyone. Um, we're really personal. So um, if you want to follow up with anything specific, feel free to email me or to follow up with a question. Um, there's a question about international internship opportunities. Um, so what I want to say about that is we have this awesome database that if you want to study abroad, um, you go to this database and you can put in any or all criteria. It's like shopping online. You can say how long you want to go, where you want to go. Um, you know, do you want to do uh, community service while you're there? Do you want to do an internship? And it'll whittle down those opportunities and filter out just the things you're looking for. There are uh, schools that require or make available to you an internship while you're there. So the answer to that is yes. You guys are asking great questions. This is amazing. We've had like over 26 questions so far. Um, with that, more, oh, go ahead, good. I see one more question um, asking if there's a general class that all business majors take. So yeah, we have Business 99, as Mary and Tammy mentioned, um, that basically focuses on interpersonal skills, um, resume building, uh, we do mock interviews where we set you up for um, internship interviews. Um, we talk about professional attire, what to wear. Um, so it's basically a general course um, that teaches you skills you need all throughout college and when you graduate. And then as for specific content, um, so like we said, all business students take um, principal courses of economics, finance, accounting, marketing, management. So during that time, you'll get to figure out what you like the most and um, if you want to pick up a minor or if you would like to switch to something. Um, it's a really great way to kind of test the waters and everything your first year. Our career center also offers individual career counseling as well. So they have resources online. You can look at their website, but then you can also have a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a career counselor to talk about what might be a good fit and what career opportunities are available if you major in certain areas. Also in that business 99 one, or 100 course, like we also like to teach you guys Excel, like right from the get-go, just kind of give you a little bit, some tips and tricks, because I can assure you, you'll definitely need to know it, like especially if you, um, in your internship and job. I can't tell you how much Excel I did in my co-op at Johnson & Johnson. It was very heavy in Excel, so especially if you're interested in that, um, make sure you're paying attention to the Excel from that class. <laughs> it was really helpful. I just saw a question pop up about access to northern New Jersey and New York City. So we have Hamilton train station right nearby that accesses those locations in addition to um, other ones. Um, you know, in the tri-state area as well. So uh, are there many internships available in NYC? Um, so I've had three internships in my time and I did two of those in New York City. And then there's also, so there's obviously um, opportunity to do an internship in New York City. Um, and we have a lot of companies that come to TCNJ looking to fill internships in both Philadelphia um, and New York City. So for example, PwC 
Um, you can intern in either Philadelphia or New York City, depending on which is closer to where you live uh, during the summer if you're interning there. So um, definitely have opportunity to intern there. I don't know if you guys want to add to that. Yeah, actually, so in terms of like getting to the train, um, the, that bus that we were talking about before actually takes you to the Hamilton train station. So free bus to the train station, and then you can just take the train from there. So you don't have to worry about like Ubering there or anything like that. I think there was a question about when you have to start making payments. Um, I'm not exactly sure about that. Um, I think it depends on like what your payment plan is, whether it's deferred, like depending on if you're taking like on any debt or whatnot. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that. Um, but. Yeah, I was just looking that one up in the background because I didn't know the answer. It looks like mm -hmm. the middle of August is either pay your bill or make a payment towards your bill. So mm -hmm. in general, mid-August, um, you'll see a full billing summary come out soon. We also, we had a question about double, double majoring in business. Uh, at TCNJ, we want to make sure that um, you, you're, you have the opportunity to explore different areas, but we don't want um, too much overlap. So when it comes to double majoring, you can only have three courses overlap. So you could do a major minor within the School of Business, but to do two of the majors you can't do, the only one that you can do it with is the BA in Economics because it's quite different from the other business majors. The other business majors share the same common business core. Uh, so you could easily pick up another minor within business, but you wouldn't do two majors within business because there's just way too much overlap. It looks like we're winding down on questions. Oh, we just got another one. I'm not sure if this has been answered, but due to COVID, will the decision deadline be moved past May 1st to June 1st? So I was actually on a call earlier today, and as of right now, the decision deadline is still May 1st. However, if there's a reason that you need a little bit more time, you should contact admissions and, and say, you know, hey, can I have a week or something like that. Um, they are going to try to be lenient right now. They know people are weighing a lot of things into their fall decisions right now. Um, so it hasn't officially been moved, but if you need a little bit of time, please contact admissions. That being said, I'm finding these days that as soon as I say something out loud about a deadline, the next day it gets a little bit amended. So it could absolutely move to June 1st, but as of right now, it's May 1st. Any other last questions? Um, somebody had asked about the recording of this discussion. And by all means, we are recording this. Um, we know there's some people that had to duck out early or couldn't make it tonight. The School of Business has a YouTube channel. It's TCNJ School of Business. I did paste the link into the chat box, but also by signing onto this webinar tonight, we have all your names and emails. So we'll send a follow-up email with the link in case you wanna go back and hear something for a second time. Um, if anyone has any final questions, um, we'll, we'll wrap up. It's almost 8.15. Um, maybe there's questions also that some of our students thought people might ask or something you hope to mention, but this is a good opportunity to say any kind of closing comment. There's one more question in the Q&A box. Um, what items would you suggest students using for their dorm, such as fans? So definitely fans. <laughs> um, the towers are not air conditioned, so we have our windows open and fans going, get some circulation ventilation going through there. <laughs> That's definitely essential. Um, most people had a mini fridge with them uh, just to keep water. I had a Brita filter in there, so we always had cold water. Um, I had a mattress topper, which I thought was super nice, um, made, you know, bed more comfortable, more homey. <laughs> um, and then of course, like there's little things like a rug can make your room nicer if you wanted to. Um, Nicole or Kyle, did you have any more essentials? <laughs> um, I have like a stackable. So there's, um, stackables you can buy to store like a lot of your, um, if you have like medications or anything or, like a f like you should probably bring like a first aid kit just in case you need like a band-aid or something and don't want to like leave your dorm at night so just things like that um or any personal items you can store in there um that's also good to like put under your bed and um maybe like a chair just so your room's like inviting like i had a chair in there so that when people 
you know, come in, they can sit down and you can talk for a while. Um, I guess just things depending on your personality to make it more homey. Yeah, I definitely agree with the fan thing that we were talking about. So I lived on the seventh floor of the towers. So I thought that was pretty hot and there's 10. So I can't even imagine what it was like up there, but it's only really for the first few weeks of school. It's like pretty toasty in there. So I had three fans and that made the room like pretty, pretty nice. Me and my roommate were like blowing them a the whole time. Um, and you can't rise your bed, but you can lift it. It should have little um, like brackets or something you can lift up your bed and if you want to put like storage containers under your bed uh, I thought that was really helpful just to keep the clutter I bought like those plastic bins and just threw stuff in there um, that was really helpful for me I remember there was also one dorm on my floor that had a marker board and that was like the dorm to be in because they would put <laughs> like puns of the day on and um it was just made a lot more sociable so if you're if you're like a social person get like a marker board and make some friends people will write hi on it if they're too shy to come up to you <laughs> <laughs> small things like that <laughs> You guys talk about all this and it makes me want to go back and do it all over. So. <laughs> me too. <Good> time. <laughs> me too. <laughs> we used to have this big beanbag chair. It was like, I don't know, like three and a half feet, four feet. And the big thing was people coming in and trying to steal it. But <laughs> um, any other closing comments? Anybody? I mean, I just really enjoyed my time here. Um, the business school is awesome, um, very supportive, and I think I've grown, you know, so much throughout my time here. And, you know, it's all thanks to the business school and the people here. And, you know, TCNJ overall just has such a great culture. Everyone's super friendly and helpful. And you kind of realize that um, from, you know, day one. And unfortunately, you guys can't like come to campus to see all that. But hopefully, like talking to us kind of gives you that vibe and hopefully we're able to, you know, give you a lot of information um, to make your decision or if you have made your decision to kind of ease some of the, the things that can be nerve wracking about going to college um, and freshman year. Yeah, I remember um, when I visited, I think it was um, the person giving my tour said that TCNJ was voted one of the most friendly college campuses. And that could not be more true. Like when you're walking, everyone smiles at you, <laughs> which is not the norm if you're, just walk around and say like, compare this to New York City, it's like, couldn't be more different. Everyone's um, smiling and there's, everyone hang out, hangs out outside and um, socializes. It's, it's a very um, hometown feel in college. And that's something, that's one of the main reasons um, that I chose CCNJ. And I think if you look at this webinar, like the Kyle, Nicole and I are all three seniors and we're so excited to tell you guys how much we love TCNJ. <laughs> so I think that, um, shows how memorable and how meaningful our four years have been. Yeah, definitely. Like the three of us are very sad to go. <laughs> and I think this is a lot about the school and how it really became completely a second home um, for all of us. So I think in TCNJ, like the people really stand out. Everyone really is trying to help you. And I think um, there's just so much that people like want to do just to be there for you and it like what Katya was saying about it being the like one of the friendliest campuses it's like if you don't hold the door for someone behind you like everyone's like you're like what like why didn't you do that <laughs> like I think it's like everyone just like is really nice and it was a really great place and even though we're a small school um, we're not so small where you see the same people I literally have met new friends up through this last semester I didn't even, I ended up interning with this girl. I didn't even know she went to TCNJ. She's my year in like in the business school and I hadn't met her. So um, there's always ways to get to know new people. We're sad for you guys to go. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going. You're staying. Can't be said so. Sorry, can't start working. <laughs> <laughs> we only give you a couple months and then we make sure that you come back and talk to class or talk to the panel, you know, bring back tales from the real world. <laughs> um, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to ask uh, you to share your LinkedIn profiles as well. 
Um, that also encourages maybe some of our incoming students to get a jump on it and, and start that LinkedIn. Um, but, and also share your email addresses. So if anyone has any questions, um, this is not the ending. This is only the beginning. And we are always open to answering anything at all that might be helpful to you. Um, I can't thank everyone enough for spending your time tonight. You know, we said, oh, we'll have a chat for 45 minutes or an hour. It's an hour and 20 minutes. Um, and I think this was very, very useful. So thank you everybody for your time. I can't wait to see you in person again. And for all of our guests with us, we can't meet you in person as well. Have a good night.